finding that good morning now, again um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen sure in Nigeria, may we all rise for the national the anthem side please and the government <laughs> Thank you. Could we just say the pledge also? I pledge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The Integrity Organization and the Convention on Business Integrity welcomes you to the second in the series of the roundtable session on service delivery at the Nigerian ports with a theme to standard operating procedures that work in Nigerian and terminals. The first round table held in Lagos about two weeks ago, and we had representatives from um, the Shippers Council, the Nigerian ports, the police, customs immigration, the port health officials, and um, the technical unit on governance and anti-corruption reforms. Too. Yes, and also the uh, quarantine service and also a number of stakeholders um, who also use the ports. So the Danish International Development Agency, as well as MACN, for work, making this event possible. We appreciate you all for taking time out to attend this event. And we just want to inform you, we've already had our tea, and also to mention that the covenant is um, to, the, to your left outside the hall. Thank you very much. Very quickly, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Vivek Menon to give a good message. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. I've learned that I think um, I'm supposed to get a response back, so very good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, someone recently told me that the secret to Nigeria is in, in its people. And having been here for just a few weeks, I, have, I must say that I've been humbled by your hospitality. So thank you very much for, for all that you've done so far. We are gathered here today uh, to address and discuss a topic that's also very close to our heart. And perhaps more importantly, call to the people of Nigeria. How can the service delivery of Nigerian seaports and terminals become an effective and efficient integral part of Nigeria's vision of ease of doing business. Shipping by its own nature is very traditional and many would say it's a very conservative industry. Having worked on ships myself and been in the industry for some years, I can very much vouch for that notion. It also brings certain traditional practices, especially when a ship comes to port. And some of these practices are in the form of gratification in various forms. But as you must have heard, uh, Mr. Papa, today there are laws which prohibit such practices and which have also driven initiatives such as the Maritime Anti-Corruption Network. The Maritime Anti-Corruption Network, in short MACN, is a global business network that provides a platform for maritime businesses to work towards eradicating, if possible, corruption practices in the industry. And together with its 125 members, we represent 30% of global tonnage, 80% of container shipping, and almost 8,000 ships globally. And they are comprised of vessel owners, vessel managers, 
and it also includes cargo owners and various supply, uh, supply and service providers. Over the years, MSCN has developed and shared practical tools, best practices in the anti-corruption in the maritime industry sector. We have also implemented various collective action initiatives in various countries, including Nigeria. And specifically in Nigeria, its implementation of the standard operating procedures and the grievance reporting mechanism through the Port Service Support Portal, PSSP, which is developed by the Nigerian government. Now, it is our objective through such events to launch a series of interventions aimed to promoting the transparency and consistent use of these standard operating procedures, which will eventually lead to a more predictable, in time and cost, vessel clearance and cargo clearance. It also gives stakeholders such as yourselves here an opportunity to be a part of this ongoing collective action to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of Nigerian ports and terminals. We believe through collective action we can create a safer, a simpler, an efficient operating environment which benefits everyone, but most importantly, which is respected by everyone. I take this opportunity to wish you all a successful day ahead. I look forward to the discussion that will unfold from this meeting and also interacting with you in person. Once again, thank you very much and welcome to the session. I think we can be more generous with our applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, if you go to the second page of your notebooks, you will find the agenda. In case you're looking for the agenda, it is actually in the notebook. In the interest of time, um, we're going to give opportunity now, but maybe I should uh, also uh, underscore what the day is about. Uh, from the video and from what has been said by Mr. Vivek Menon, I, I hope we've gotten the impression that contrary to popular belief, there is actually something the government is doing that is working quite well. And so this stakeholder meeting is all about how to enhance it. What can we do to make it work much better? We know it is working, but it's not quite there yet. So how can we strengthen it is what we're hoping. How can we improve service delivery at the Nigerian ports is what we'll be talking about today. Um, let me start by maybe recognizing a few uh, persons who are here with us today. Um, we have Mrs. J.C. Mwazu, who is the Assistant Controller General of Immigrations in charge of Border Management. Please, can you uh, show yourself? Thank you very much. Oh, Kwazu, apologies. You've met Mr. Vivek Menon from the Maritime Anti-Corruption Network in Denmark. We also have Mr. Babatunde Ruashe, who is the President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Please, a round of applause for him. Just walking in is the representative of the independent, the uh, Yes, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, apologies, the ICPC, uh, who is representing chair of the Project Steering Committee for the Port Services Support Portal and other reforms. Uh, I would also like to recognize uh, Mrs. Ezedimma of the Nigeria Shippers Council. She's a director at the Nigerian Shippers Council. Please, can we be more generous with that? Thank you. Mrs. Ene Ogenyi, also of the Shippers Council. 
Mr. Fadipe of Shippers Council as well. Um, Madam, I'm sorry, I don't have your name, but I know that you are representing Tinkan Island Container Terminals. You're welcome, Ma. I know there's also a representative from the Bureau for Public, uh, uh, Public Enterprises, BPE. Yes, you're welcome. Mr. Oboma, who is representing the DG Nemasa. Where are you, sir? You're welcome, sir. Okay, and we have also representatives from NAFDAC in the room. From NAFDAC, okay, they're at the back table over there. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I know we owe the Ports Authority, apologies, <laughs> Mrs. Williams from the Ports Authority, you are very welcome, ma'am. Yes. So, um, without further ado, we think that we will go straight, if we can, into the panel discussion, because our time is far spent um, already. But how we're going to have it is that in the panel discussion, we're going to set out what exactly has been going on from 2012, and to ask ourselves the questions, has it gone far enough? How can we strengthen it? And is it as well used or as well known? How can we improve the level of awareness that stakeholders, both within government and outside government, um, have regarding it? Because we only have five places, um, I will invite five people to be in the panel initially, and then we will give the other um, agencies an opportunity to speak from the floor, and we will then throw question and answers open to the rest of the floor. That is how we plan to, uh, to proceed. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, join me in welcoming Mr. Babatunde Ruashe of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Can I invite Mr. Fadipe, who is the officer responsible for the uh, PSSP, the specific project that we're looking at, Mr. Fadipe from the Shippers Council. Can we have after him the representative of the ICPC, please, as well? Please come forward. Can we have Mr. Oboma of the uh, of Nimasa representing the DG? And we wonder if Mrs. Williams of the Ports Authority wouldn't mind also joining on the platform. A round of applause, please. We know that you are not necessarily speaking officially on behalf of your agencies for, for those who are in government. Um, and we also hope that um, everything that we discuss here really stays here and it should not be attributed. So please, um, I don't know if there's any, do we have members of the press here? Yeah? Okay. Please, we, the, the, the rules with which we are conducting our discussion, maybe when we come to question and answer, then we can, but we want to speak quite frankly about progress that has been made, where the gaps are, and what can be improved at the moment. Um, I would like to start with the person who has been midwifing and um, managing the baby called PSSP all this time. Mr. Fadipe, uh, perhaps you can give us an overview of this project. What is this project about? Why should we have hope for that there would be service delivery and improved efficiency at the Nigerian ports? Good morning, all, once again. Uh, let me say a big thank you 
uh, to the organizers of this program for having me on the show. Uh, PSSP, as the name inclined, Port Service Support Portal. This is an industry mechanism towards a grievance resolution. It was put in place by the federal government of Nigeria and all the maritime agencies who are its signatory to this port service support portal. It was launched by the vice president precisely 23rd of June 2016 and it has been up and running since then. What is it all about? It's a software mechanism whereby you can have what we call an online real-time complaints resolution. It has the advantage of being a one-stop shop for all complaints in the maritime industry in Nigeria. Equally, the data input onto that system could be used by the government for policy formulation. Also, data could be appraised and used effectively for feedback mechanism. It equally goes further to tell us in the grievance resolution mechanism in the industry, who does what, and who is the highest infraction authority or agency within the port industry. And it will equally enable us to know what are the highest occurrence incidences within the port industry. All these things will be aggregated and reports generated for the industry. It's a very simple software to use. All you need to do as a first time user is to register online by putting on the web page H S colon double slash www dot pssp dot ng. When you do that, you get to the home page. If if I may interrupt you very quickly, the question is: Is it working? It's working. If you're in this hall, you can log on immediately. As as no, here. not the portal. Effectiveness of the portal. Is it working, sir? It's working, sir. Can you give us an example okay. of why you say it is working? Yeah, why I said this is working is if you have any instruction as I speak, you can log in to that system and your infraction will be noted and you get the feedback. So it's working. Uh, it's not feedback that people are looking for. They're looking for resolution of their problems. So are we getting examples of people making complaints and getting the issues resolved from, for them through this mechanism? Sir? In your remark, you've mentioned some. And as I speak with you, in the last 72 hours, we've recorded some successes again. Okay. In the Lagos Sport Axis. We are by a vessel alarm bed had some such challenges with the officials of the government who are statutorily empowered to board the ship and uh, it's taking too long for that captain to bear. He quickly registered on the portal and our team quickly responded live to the uh, yearnings of that captain. And those officials, as I speak, the relevant LEAs are taking care of it. Okay, it's still a bit cryptic, sir. Um, I know some things you cannot divulge, but maybe you can tell us. So, I seem to be hearing that the procedure, which is that when um, officials board, 
they shouldn't spend more than 90 minutes on board. Okay. That that had been, there was an infraction against that. Yep. Okay. And it was now taking much, much too long for the captain. That is true. So he complained yeah. through the, the process. Yep. And Shippers Council intervened immediately. Being the administrator of the PSSP. Okay. Yes, as the administrator, got it to the parties who are responsible. Yeah. And then action was taken. Because it is a live occurrence. Okay. That's why people have to be dispatched immediately to the site. If it's not a live occurrence, then the system will deal with it accordingly. But it's a life occurrence, which you cannot allow the system to keep working on it. So people have to go there immediately and get it resolved. Okay, maybe I can and go... The, and, the, and the backlash, hmm, or let me say the aftermath, Yes. what I mean by early is, is the law enforcement against who are statutorily responsible to deal with such infractions. That's why I said that has been, been taken care by those agencies. Okay. That's what I meant. We will come back to you again because okay. I, I'm sure um, the audience will feel that this is new. It's not what, or do, do people generally know that you can get this level of service from the government? No. Ah, okay. <laughs> Maybe I should come to you first, sir. Maybe you'd like to make a comment or two to react to what uh, Mr. Fadikwe has said, sir. Mr. Ruashe from Lagos Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, indeed, I was surprised, and that was why I was taking note that there could be a recourse for people who are aggrieved, who have not been treated fairly, or have not asked, uh, uh, obtained the desired attention in the port. I am not aware of it. I mean, and if uh, our chamber is uh, the oldest chamber with the largest uh, membership, because every day, every now and then, I have problems escalated to my desk. I have a one now that even taken off with the Nigerian customs. I never knew that a thing like this exists. I mean, somebody who's had his, uh, his achievement in the port, there is a difference in classification. An item that has been brought even before now, for so many years, the custom felt it should fall under a particular classification. But this person said it should be this classification, which they got a dispensation from years back, even from the same customs. So they asked for a sample. Sample had been given since August. Up till now, there has been no resolution. What we were advised to do was to go and put a bond in place last week, and the consignment aligned there. So <laughs> I don't know whether the sort of thing we are talking of would have been a tool that we could use because that's so gratifying. But then also, yes, you could put something in place to work. But certainly we all agree that this system is not working. If it were working, the sort of problem we have at the Apapa port, a lot of complaints, either we don't know. So if you put on the light and put it under the table, nobody will know. So that's why I think we still to do more work and we should, I mean, people will be very happy to know that you could go to complain somewhere. Of course, we know that the big one in the port, they are beyond control of anybody, which is the Nigerian customs. So I don't know whether the Nigerian customs is part of people you could also bring their problem before this system and whether they have been successes. What I keep on saying is we should have transparency in our system. We should be able to check things and know, like what they are. If I make a complaint, I, sh I should expect that I get a reference number. And that reference number is pasted somewhere. And you give a timeline. Everybody can go there. I can log in and say, I, case number one, dealt with. Case number one, resolved. Unresolved because of this, of that, of that. If we could have that sort of a transparent system, I think it will help us a lot. Because like I was telling you, if I clear my consignment at the port and just a kilometer out of the port, we have a federal operation 
stopping my container, taking my container to Ikeja. <laughs> One would have expected that unless I have stolen the container out, a lot of people should be punished because there will be an officer that had cleared that same container. Nothing is done to that person. But then my container is seized and for whatever reasons it will be detained there. Uh, one can lighten it to when you have students admitted to an institution. We all know that if you are admitted to uh, an institution of higher learning, there is something we call clearance. The student is cleared and he, when he's in 300 or 400, you say he doesn't have the prerequisite to study the course. Hundreds of students are thrown out. But those who have cleared them well, are never dealt with. And you keep on perpetuating that same uh, atrocity. So I think we need to, it's very gratifying. We need to look at this again, this very good product that we have, that we are not aware of. Okay, um, I know Mr. Badike would like to react. Yeah. I, I would let you react immediately. I will go instead to Mrs. Williams, but please, I'm coming straight back to you. <laughs> Please, can we pass that to Mrs. Williams? Perhaps, Mr. Mrs. Williams, you can give us some idea. Is the Ports Authority a part of this? Who are the members of this project? Who are the participants? And if you can give us a sense of the history of this project, because clearly most people don't know, and I'm sure many people in the room don't know. Um. Let me start by appreciating um, this initiative, which is um, aimed at launching a series of interventions um, as a way of supporting the activities of the Port Steering Committee, uh, implementing the Corruption Risk Assessment uh, Report in the maritime sector. Um, Some time back, um, there was there were complaints and um, allegations, more or less, of corruption within the port sector. When we talk about the port here, we know it is not only the Nigerian Ports Authority that operates within the port. So quite a number of issues were flagged out. And um, this resulted in the commissioning of a study. When the um, report came out, that we call the uh, Corruption Risk Assessment Report, um, government took it very seriously. We know that um, it is one thing to conduct studies. The main issue is implementation. So in driving the process of implementation, a committee was set up. Um, we have quite virtually, I think apart from the Chamber of Commerce here, most of us are on the port um, steering committee. We have the Nigeria Immigration Service, we have um, Port Health, all working towards implementing the major recommendations. Is in this, customs there? In this um, project. Yeah. Is customs part of it, ma'am? Yes. yes. Customs is part of it and they do attend our meetings. We must be reminded that we operate a customs port. So um, they are a key driver towards anything that would happen in the, in the port sector. So um, the port steering committee has taken on board most of the, 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 the challenges that were flagged out and the recommendations for fact. We meet on a quarterly basis. We try to see that um, we get better with each, um, at each meeting. We, for us in Nigeria Ports Authority, it is so heartwarming. Our desire is, or our vision is to be the leading port in Africa. And if you want to be the leading port in Africa, there must be that customer satisfaction. There must be transparency. There must be accountability. So we find the activities of this committee uh, a paramount support to our own um, activities. And then you may score yourself high, but you should be interested, more importantly, in your stakeholder feedback. And um, the port service support portal is 
a feedback mechanism where at least somebody is able to tell you that I have this issue within the port. Please, can you look at it? Once it hits the portal, um, it is taken up, transmitted to the relevant um, agency to, to, to deal with. So for us, we feel that um, it is indeed a success story. And um, it attracted executive high-level launch of the SOPs. What, why do we need SOPs? We know that um, corruption breeds where you have discretionary powers. So when standards are set, when you know that this is how I should be progressing, this is the pathway for this particular issue, and you are ready also to stand by the standard that has been set, we would be getting somewhere. So on the PSSP, you have the standard operating procedures of all the agencies. So you are able to, to, to go in there, look at for each procedure, what should you be expecting? And we feel that um, that is actually a step in the right direction. Still um, moving on now, it is one thing for you to have something like what um, our rep from Chamber of Commerce has said. It is another thing to have that awareness. And that is where this um, synergy between the government side and the private sector should really be applauded. Um, we would need that, that patronage on that portal to bring in the issues. And we'll, we'll, we'll be able to work on, work on them and close in in respect of issues that are brought to our own attention. So we have um, TUGA here, we have um, ICPC, like we have said, and um, a number of all the agencies here represented driving this process. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ma. <laughs> Speaking of the ICPC, maybe we should ask the question that um, Mr. Ruashe asked in the beginning. Will customs be subject to this particular process? Is customs really part of it? I don't know if you'd like to answer that question, sir. Uh, good morning. The straight answer to that question is absolute yes. They are, they have always been part and parcel of the process. When the CRA was conducted in 2012, corruption risk, corruption risk assessment was conducted in 2012, they were part of the process. The integrity plan put in place by the CRA report, the recommendation, the recommendation of the CRA report yes. that indicated that there are grievances in the sector with regards to ethics, grievances in the sector with regards to service, delivery, and, and so on and so forth. And those grievances were to be resolved, not in the way that it was being resolved at that time, because when you have a report against a particular person, as it was flagged in the report, a particular person or agency, and the report was forwarded to the person and that agency to resolve. You see that the, there will be backlash yeah. somehow. I mean, for the person reporting. So, but the grievances were not getting resolved. So it was flat, and the mechanism was put in place that okay, make this grievance uh, resolution mechanism an online thing that will be open to all the agencies, serving as monitor on one another. That okay, we have problems in the port. The problem is with regards to agency A, and it is agency A that's supposed to resolve it. It's not being resolved. Everybody knows, and everybody will be able to call, I mean, themselves to, I mean, uh, other. So that was the, I mean, basic reason to tie for, I mean, the PSSP. And it is not possible that the customs would not be part of what it was a part of from the start. Even now, they are part of it. And to the question that was asked by uh, LCCI, or the statement made by LCCI that uh, it is not working. It is not working is different from it is not being used. 
it is not being used. Not being used probably because the awareness was low, but every issue reported on that platform has been resolved. So far, it's not as if it was never used at all. PSSP have been used on locations and issues have been resolved on the PSSP. It could be better. The awareness could be created and more people could rely on it and more grievances could be resolved through it. I mean, that is, and I think that is the, uh, the, 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 the objective of this intervention. That awareness should be created on the availability of that I mean, platform for uh, grievance resolution and it should be used. But that it will not work, yes, it will work. And to, I mean, uh, 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 until this moment that we are talking, issues that, that, that have been reported on that platform have been resolved. It is working. The awareness is low. So clearly, Mr. Padikbe has some advice to, uh, just, to share on uh, this. Just to make some clarification on it. And uh, uh, my president, sir, hmm? I just want to bring you to the memory lane and share some information with you. Uh, last year, apart from uh, the launching of the PSSP, which was done in all the ports of the Federation, Lagos, Wari, Apapa, One, and Calabar, everywhere, the awareness was there. Each agency took it upon themselves to do an advocacy physics to relevant agencies, private sectors. And uh, Nigerian Shippers Council's chief executive visited SCCI. Visited about two years ago when Mr. Ongosun Kena was the import and export group chairman at that time. He visited, and I remember Mr. Ongosun Kena, Lias with me, brought some problems. Our son, it was resolved. But he never went through the platform. And I don't know why people refuse to go through the platform. Probably the ICT level in Nigeria is low, or people are always in a hurry. I wouldn't know. But it was resolved. And to your uh, observation that uh, people want to know where is my complaints, what's my reference number, what is this, what is that, you can track this thing real time online on that system. And uh, the issue of the uh, customs that was mentioned, they've answered it. Uh, the customs are under the obligation to fall in line with whatever we have on the PSSP. And part of the success story is that issues against the customs on the PSSP were resolved. And uh, the Nigerian Shippers Council equally have a platform of engagement with the customs quarterly. And I don't know whether my director of regulatory services is presently here who want to expand it on that. And I know issues of customs are resolved. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you want to react to that, sir. You know, whether you will react quickly. Mr. Boma, we're coming to Yes, you it's uh, gratifying to know that uh, it's working. And uh, like I said, I have a test case now that I'm going to put forward. Uh, this a round of applause for Lagos Paper, yeah. which we have okay. to prove the system. Yeah, yeah which uh, which is uh, this question of sample that we are, uh, a custom uh, one of our members has given since August, and uh, the custom is yet to come back with a result. Of course, our whole conclusion is that the custom knows that they, what they are doing is wrong, because I mean it's a test. We gave a result that we have. I'm carrying this. And he said, bring sample since August. And we have given sample up to now, no result. So, so we'll test it, and it's, uh, we'll, then we'll, also be, we'll also help to make it known to the whole world that uh, this is going to be there. Okay, so maybe we should go to Mr. Oboma, because in uh, Mrs. Williams' submission, uh, I'm saying that because she's a lawyer. <laughs> in, in what she said, she, she hinted that there are these standard operating procedures. The question, Mr. Oboma, is do these SOPs cover every aspect of work, or are there areas that are not yet included in the SOPs? Good morning, all. Good morning. Uh, 
My name is Mr. Boba, representing Nemasa. Going straight to your question, sir, I do not think that there is a way one SOP will cover everything. We may have to develop and make them tell them to particular to everything. Like my own case, we go to the post, we have the laws we were given by National Assembly, which is to try our best, keep the seas clean, keep it safe, keep it secure, so that the maritime commerce can go. In doing that, we have the people that do survey of ships, because you know that uh, some of the contracts that are involved in this maritime business, uh, like the contract of carriage, is, uh, is premised on the fact that the shipper will provide a seaworthy vessel to be able to do this job. The master comes in to fill the gap between the two, to tell the, to look at the ship, certify that it's seaworthy through the various mechanisms that we have. So in doing that, the matter definitely we have an operating procedure which is tailored to it. For example, in recent times, especially since the introduction of ease of doing business, because I'm sure that's what we are here talking about, ease of doing business. Now, they accuse the massa of arbitrarily delaying ships. Yes, the massa has two main jobs. One is to regulate. One is the promotional aspect, where you have the 3% and the rest of them for ships. In regulating, they have to develop a standard procedure for that job. You cannot tell the person in ship survey, for instance, that you have two hours to survey a ship, or you have to go on board for 90 minutes, you have to go on board for one hour. No. We are required to go on board. If we find something, we can delay the vessel indefinitely because of one thing. A vessel is normally there. We don't arrest ships anyway. We only detain. The courts do the arrest. We detain when it is not possible for the vessel to put to sea without causing danger to herself to the crew or to the environment. And such things can never be withdrawn until she makes right that thing. You cannot say because you've delayed her, so she has to go. No. So when you put standard oppressing procedures in that area, it has to be tailored to the particular job of the master. So I don't know the one they have, the standard oppressing procedure, whether it covers all this. But anyway, uh, let me congratulate them, let me thank them for making this PSSP platform possible. That means we now have an avenue, a, 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 a mechanism through which we can lay our complaints. But one thing I want to ask, if the grievance is posted there, one, how does it get far to people? Is there an alert system? Assuming that the master is on that platform and somebody goes to the port, and causes some disturbance, and it is posted there. How do they make sure that the master gets an alert immediately to know? That is one thing. Two is they say they've created awareness, but I think with something like PSSP, the awareness creation has to be ongoing for several reasons. For example, I am here. I'm not so much aware of the creation of that platform. So, yeah, um, uh, we are being sincere, please. We, we are being sincere. So, what mechanism do they have for continuous awareness creation? Because if people are aware of that platform, from all we have said, we will be sure that our problem has been solved a bit. I'm sorry, sometimes I do not speak like a government official. It's because of one reason. I was once a port user. I was once a ship master for some years, and I bring in my ship to the port, and I know what happens. So now that I'm gone to the liquidity agency, I kind of see it with the different eyeglasses. 
the problems that are there because I was facing the problem before. Now I'm part of the solution provider. So when I kind of make statements, it might be real. It might not be so flavored. Forgive me, please. So two things I said is that when it's continuous, then if the person pulls up a report, say, look, I'm here, I'm having a problem, and you say that the platform will correct it, what if the platform does not fully correct it? What next? Let us take it to the end, because the idea is for the person to be satisfied. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ba, you look like you want to respond. Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. The general idea behind PSSP was to render, I mean, for uh, anybody with I mean, uh, grievance to be able to render it on that platform and that report is escalated to every agency represented at the port. Members from all these agencies have been profiled at the back end of the, of the platform. So the, the SOP that you spoke about, sir, that you are not aware of, uh, that must have something to do with how Nimasa have cooperated so far with the committee. This SOP was launched, the PSSP launched by the Vice President of the Federal Republic 2016. It was launched in six ports across the nation and Nimasa was part of that launch. And develop their own. You develop your own SOP, and it's a complete SOP covering all your activities at the port. If the awareness is still very low inside of your agency, then the fault is located with you. Of course, Mr. Bakari, a, if be, I may just interrupt, yeah. because um, what is very clear to us yes. in this process is that the awareness is generally very low. Very low, yeah. Outside the ports, it is low. low. Maybe at the top, it is high. Because those are the people who subscribe right. to it. To the idea. But driving down the process yes. and all the tools for making it a part of people's everyday job, maybe those tools I will, are yet to be created in I most agencies. I agree agents. with you totally okay. on that. So maybe that's for, why for, for, instance, me, for, for instance, yes. you, uh, uh, why I agree with you, for instance, the committee, so far I think we have visited the Massa three times. So at the top, the awareness is high, at the top, whether, I mean the concept or the general idea percolates the entire organization, I will, know, I will never be able to be able to say. So I agree with you that the, the, the awareness may be high, at the at the at the top, but percolating down, no, maybe it's I mean, it's very it's very it's very low. I agree with you. Okay. Uh, I, I know Mr. Oboma wants to come back. Let him come back, and we'll come to Mr. Fadi Pe, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman, for bailing me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, I was not actually saying that awareness has soon be created. What I was pointing out is to the fact that awareness creation has to be a continuous project. That's what I was pointing out. They have created it. What mechanism do they have in place to continue until the real end users? For example, you have a shipping company. You call the executive to a meeting. You finish up average, finish up a deal. But the person who is going to generate and send into that platform is going to be maybe the man on the ship, the captain, and he's not aware. So let them continue this awareness because this platform is useful, it's very nice. Let the team be continued and let it go. And I see asked if the thing is not resolved or is not resolved completely, what next? Is it a, something in the platform or a mechanism in place? 
to to Mr. Fadipe. Okay, please use the mic, sir. Yes. ICPC, for instance, is on the platform for enforcement. So if I mean resolution cannot be gotten through that particular platform, it is I mean the, the timeline is clearly stated on the platform. After a particular threshold of time, the report is now escalated to ICPC. Yeah. If it is ethical issue, issue and I mean service delivery issue for resolution, enforcement is there, but it is the last result. And like I said, every issues that have been reported on the platform so far, none has escalated to enforcement because everything has been got resolved. And the immigration can testify to that. I mean, all, all agencies here can testify to that. And to the issue of publicity, honestly, uh, this is, I'm not uh, a person that normally I, I don't I don't I don't uh, uh, push I mean boundaries. But publicity for that uh, project by arrangement by design was actually given to Nimasa. Yes. That is to show you the good job they are doing with regards to publicity, if an official of NIMASA is not even aware of that. Up to today, I do not think that a single penny has been contributed by NIMASA to promote I mean, uh, 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 the, the project. I mean, that is to show the commitment at the top as well as at the low, lower level. Okay, uh, before... <laughs> Before you respond, sir, let me just quickly, uh, we, we are told that uh, our audience has <laughs> that there are people who are following us online as we're speaking, that is being live streamed. Um, but, uh, if you want to follow it, it's the hashtag CBI Roundtable. CBI Roundtable is the hashtag. Um, so let, let me come, let me, and it's being streamed live on Web TV NG, Web TV NG, Web TV NG. Okay, so Mr. Fadipe, a, a very quick reaction before we go to the port users. Okay, yes. Thank, thank you so much, uh, moderator. Uh, it's just a clarification for the government agencies on board of vessels now, based on. Uh, what uh, Mr. Guma said about their statutory functions as regards regulation and as regards the tonnage on board. One thing should be clear to all government agencies here today who are boarding vessels and why government decide to give timeline. Any official government on board of vessels has the captain to grapple with. It is this captain who you will engage, and as long as you are on board of that vessel, the captain cannot do anything. We have vessel captains here. And that's why government clamor for joint boarding after port head to be able to reduce the timeline. But the fact that agencies are boarding separately increases the timeline. And we said, if there's any infraction, you must have been able to detect it within your timeline. And when it is detected, there's an agent who has banned that vessel. And get that agent down the vessel to your office because the vessel is still carrying out operations. At the port, establish it. And when you establish it, government have put in place a tool called remitter. If truly there's an infraction, issue remitter and let that vessel agent do the needful. That's just the clarification. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, clearly, it shows that uh, we have a problem. Uh, if the agencies who are supposed to be on this committee to, uh, there is this shortage of knowledge uh, in it. Awareness is short. Uh, he had actually clarified one thing that is of uh, concern to me about this timeline. If we are thinking of creating a transparent system, we shouldn't be looking at the worst case. We should look at what time something could be done reasonably. And that's why timeline has to be there. And if the timeline is to be exceeded, somebody should put something in writing. 
I know that's one thing we all run away from. Nobody wants to, they will say, don't quote me. If you think you have found anything serious, put something in writing and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing and serve it on the other party. Then coming to publicity, I think in a, at a port, maybe we have to have a billboard, something big, where you can say, if you have complaint, this is what you can do. So that, is it there? Okay. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it should be there, very visible. So that everybody will see it. Just like in those days, we have uh, Savicom. I mean, we know we had Savicom in this place, and we know what has become of Savicom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Madam, uh, you, you have been uh, you have been called back. <laughs> yes. Um, this is just to give an assurance that um, the uh, PSC put, uh, the PSC had um, taken a resolution on that, and we are implementing. So, very soon. At every um, port entry, you, you, you're going to find um, such an address there. A round of applause, please. In Lagos, we had uh, Mrs. Rashida Okodua, MNI, from the ICPC, actually on the panel. And I would like to, to quote the way she put it. She said, we're, we're making incremental progress. And what we would like now is to see whether there's any way to fast track the progress in, in what we're doing. So far, we've been talking a lot about vessel clearance. Yes, uh, but what about the cargo side? Uh, because there was a study that was done by, I'm sorry, because of time, we compressed what we had for you today. Otherwise, we would have shared some results from the surveys and what came back also from the ship captains. But um, many are saying that some of the things that worry them, especially those in the oil and gas sector, that their issues are not captured in the SOPs at all. How do we react to, to this complaint? Um, that some of the very specific challenges they're facing um, are not covered at all in the SOPs. How do we respond to that? Um, I believe the, 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 the way forward, as we mentioned when you came to NPA, um, is that if you have areas that you believe should be covered and it is presently not therein, you can actually write a letter to the, to the particular agency saying that for your SOP, we would like to, to have a um, clear procedure with respect to ABC. As at the last time that um, we interacted, we have even internally looked at our SOP or comments, and we noted what you, you, you mentioned to us in our offices. So we're already looking at that. But on the larger scale, I would say that if you have any area of concern, you should let that agency know. Or also the, the PSC. That, that is why we meet. We meet to update to see how we can um, address issues that come up. And this is the whole essence of uh, uh, feedback from the stakeholders. So we appreciate it. If there are specific things you would want us to address, we would be happy to look at that. What I'm saying now for Nigerian Ports Authority, that we have already um, opened our SOP now for review. Thank you. I think it's one of our resolution at PSC meeting that uh, the SOP as we have it presently on the PSSP, they are due for review. And every four, four years, we should be looking at it to, re I mean, to revise the SOPs uh, because of uh, uh, exigencies of our situation at the port. So they are due for revision. And the uh, inputs are welcome from uh, 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 every stakeholders, every operators at the at the port, at the organizational level, and at the committee level, so that we can have a, 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 a working uh, SOPs. Okay, I was hoping you would react, sir. Yes, we would uh, look at those SOPs and we'll respond. You know, we have all the sectors as our members. We will do that. Yeah. Okay, and uh, yes, we, we, we also, at the Convention of Business Integrity, if LCCI is already doing this, we would join LCCI in, in looking at all of the SOPs and uh, trying to highlight where there's opportunity uh, for improvement. 
Okay, by way of summary, therefore, um, it seems like most stakeholders, whether in the ports or outside the ports, have not been sufficiently reached with information about this project. Is that a fair conclusion from what we've discussed? Um, we are witnesses that some of all of the cases that we know of from the Maritime Anti-Corruption um, Network that have been reported through the PSSP have been resolved in a very timely manner. I think people are calling for greater transparency in the standard operating procedures, greater um, transparency in the reporting. People want to be able to get to the site, the PSSP site, and see that there have been 1,000 reports of which 999 have been resolved. It gives confidence to whoever is going to use the system. Um, it, it, even for them to be able to break down that, okay, how many complaints were against customs? Or against, so the question that was raised today about customs wouldn't have come up. You see that, okay, of all the ones that went to customs, even those ones have been resolved. It will give a lot of confidence for anyone who has an issue with customs. Because uh, I don't know if we will all agree, customs appears to be one of the very powerful <laughs> stakeholders at the ports. I mean, all the stakeholders are powerful. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Uh, OK, I won't echo that one. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so um, we find also that there is a mechanism that is working and yet we're not promoting it, which has been a challenge, actually, with government. Um, one thing we would like to challenge all of the agencies involved with is to keep records of every port call, well, and also every cargo clearance. Because if we're keeping only a tally of incidences, we will never know how well we're doing. But if you can say also on that site, there have been 1,000 ships that have come. There were only two issues. I think it also gives a perception to the port user, rather than saying, we have received 10 complaints and eight have been resolved. They don't know that it's 10 out of 10,000, for instance. So we, we need to also look at the numbers. And this is part of what the Maritime Anti-Corruption Network has been hoping um, to support the, the, the project, uh, the government's project with. We've identified 10 areas that we want to go to. I'm saying this by way of summary so we can yield to the other agencies that are seated in front to make their own contributions as well. Um, we're going to continue industry roundtables like this one to keep informing people and stakeholders. The next one is going to be um, November 19 in Port Harcourt is the next one because we've not done anything at the eastern ports. We'll come back to you, sir. The second is we're going to have a social media advert campaign. The third one is we're going to write newspaper opinion, um, uh, opinion pieces and articles at least two every quarter to keep this issue fresh. We are going to create advertising materials. So um, even the ship captains who are calling Nigeria should have a little poster there. So even when the officials board, they understand that, yes, these people understand PSSP, know the standard operating procedures. I think those vessels putting up that display will also be a bit different. Same thing on the cargo clearance side. We want to make sure that there's an app where all of these standard operating procedures, you can go through them very quickly. The private sector doesn't have time to go through pages and pages and pages of SOPs per um, agency before they know what they're supposed to do and what their rights are. So having a, a, a platform like that for the private sector, even the vessel captains, having a system where immediately after calling at the port, they can say, so how was your port call? Thumbs up or thumbs down? If you hit either of them, small questionnaire. Quickly give feedback as well. So we know how well we're doing or how well we're not doing. 
Same thing for anybody that comes to clear uh, cargo at the ports. Thumbs up or thumbs down. A quick survey. We should have those kiosks at the ports that they can use. They should also be able to do it straight from their mobile phones. We also want to have a radio program on the maritime sector, which we will do with the stakeholders of the, um, of the project, the government project, in order to make sure that this awareness is going on all the time, continuously, as you referred to um, uh, Mr. Obama. Also, there's already a quarterly newsletter. It's a print version, but, which means that all stakeholders who don't get that print version don't even know what is going on. Uh, so we would help to increase the circulation and also take it digital so it can go globally. Because the people who are interested in what is happening at our ports are not just here in Nigeria. So we would also support that. Then we have done a detailed stakeholder mapping. And we will then start to do one-on-one -on -one visits with all of these stakeholders. This is a three-year to four-year project. It's not a sprint. So we're to make sure that over three years and four years, that enough people who interact with the ports are fully aware of what is going on and what the government has put in place. Then we're putting in place a help desk for, um, for, for those because the question was asked, why do people not even report directly? We did a survey of 1,005 respondents in Port Harcourt, Abuja, Kano, and um, Lagos. And they told us that why they don't use public feedback mechanisms is two reasons, primarily. Number one, apathy. The feeling that nothing will happen. Even, so even when I report, what will then happen? which the transparency around the usage and the success will help to overcome the apathy. And then secondly, fear of retribution. And I know that there is now anonymous reporting or is about to come through um, that, that is now being done also for the PSSP, that you can report your case anonymously. That will also help when the public uh, becomes aware of that. So we will also be working on a toolkit to help um, especially the private sector to integrate these standard operating procedures into their own way of working and the government side as well, that rank and file, have a way of integrating it into their normal schedule. So nobody will say they're not aware of what is happening. And finally, we hope that as people are reporting, this can result in a Nigerian Port Integrity Index, where you can say that this particular port, I will use Tinkan, is more transparent than one other one somewhere else, and that the officers there have consistently applied the standard operating procedure, regardless of when you use the port or who you meet at the desk, it is always applied consistently, and that you can predict time and cost which is the most important thing for a port user. How long will it take me? How much will it cost me? Right now, if you have given your sample since August and you're still waiting, clearly it would have failed on those criteria already. So these are the kinds of things that we are planning. And now I would like us to turn the mic over to um, the agencies that are also here to make some comments before we throw it open to the floor to ask questions. So um, perhaps we'll start from you, madam, if you'd like to say anything. And then we'll come to Mrs. Eze Dima here. We'll, we'll go um, row by row. Thank you very much. I've heard what this person has said so far. And it looks like the pain is on top of us. And I'm wondering, what's going on with immigration? I wonder about the ports. Is that any of the factors we are doing that we need to work on? Are we willing to get funded for what we are doing best? Thank you very much. Um, very quickly, uh, I was hoping that Mr. Fadiken would have given the details of the one that involved immigrations. 
there was a vessel that was detained, not arrested, at Okados, and it was over seaman passports. And there was some debate um, at the time. But as soon as it went through the PSSB, it was escalated to the Comptroller General of Immigration. And we're happy to report that within 24 hours, the issue was resolved. The same company came back a second time, had an issue, escalated it, it was resolved. Came back a third time, had an issue, they escalated. Now, they, when they come, in fact, they just come and go, no issues. So, it, it is really a success story with the case with immigration. However, the complaint has been, what happened? Were we wrong? We know we were released to go, but nobody told us whether there was a real infraction. And if there was not a real infraction, then what happened to the officer that was uh, investigated? Because an investigation was commenced, but we never heard the result of the investigation. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Could you please introduce yourself, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Deputy Controller, Mr. Lilede. And SA for CGIS on anti corruption at the family headquarters. Actually, most of the things we're saying about Nigeria Education Service, I handle them. About that incident at Bakado. Yes. Well, I didn't have a letter. I was trying to check online how we responded. Before immediately, the thing was on the PSSB. Mr. Madikwe called me and we saw it in our office because we actually have two people that were trained on the PSSB. So I started the investigation. I had to call the owners of the vetting in Norway and all this. The problem is that at the top, the problem mostly is with the, uh, this, is, this um, what they call them, ship agent that take immigration responsibility for all these vessels. Immediately, a was raised on their seaman book. The captain of the vessel acknowledged that they were in practice. But you know, they went around when their vessel was delayed just for a few moments. They went around and they were saying that immigration needed money. That was why they delayed their vessel. By the time we investigated, I have a letter here that was written from the owner of the vessel from Norway. Let me quote exactly what he said. This is a letter from Norway. His name is Robert Tutor. What person? This is a rich boy, let's Rich free, let's Yes. Okay. He wrote to the service and said, Could you find attached our letter to immigration, the basis of the infractions? So go to go like that. And he said, going through the the line of the mail, exchanges and so on. He said, we want to tell you that there was never any reason to make any kind of payment to any immigration official, either officially or unofficially from Norway. So we wrote a letter back to the portal to the shippers council, and that was how the case was settled. So the PSSP is working. There are so many that of the grace and we recline and all the issues we So I think the problem is that there should be more awareness. Please, a round of applause. Um, I, I almost sound like I'm going from an activist to a marketer for the federal government of Nigeria on this issue. I, I really think that the work of the report steering committee should be commended. Please, another round of applause. Another round of applause. Okay, is there another agency? There was a gentleman, yes. Your name and your agency. My name is Tuji Olawo, for the Public Complaint Commission. Actually, our commission had the responsibility of listening to complaints, receive complaints, investigate me and make a recommendation to the corporate authority. Like other ombudsman in the world, like other ombudsman institutions in the world, we take uh, approach, uh, uh, we take proactive approach to every issue. Because we believe most of these infractions in the ports, in the ports uh, business is as a result of the 
and to take it to justice. So, as a public complaint commission, I think if we can be included as one of the stakeholders, it will also be of good benefit and to lead the result. So, my saying is that we should be included in all in, as a stakeholder. That's my solution. Thank you very much. Any agency, uh, any other agency from the folks, madam, would you like to comment? Okay, I think it's a lot of progress with the two lines that have been by the government. And we believe also that a lot more can be done. Because if everybody comes together and works together, most of the things that we see still see will not be done. For instance, when we go to the courts, um, I survived the regulatory technical commissions in the department. So we, we actually both monitor the joint warning and the joint examination and those two are reflected in the SOPs. Now every agency that is involved in the joint body, we still have some issues with them. The ones that are involved in joint examination, we actually had issues with them. And we wrote them. So some of them have started um, working. But there's, there's also the, the unstructured part of the logistic chain, which is the freight forwarders that are supposed to come and take possession of this cargo. So we are also working on those. So however, I'm, I'm urging this group, especially the government agencies, that we should be committed and try to make this thing work. Right now, it's not optimal, in my own opinion. And I would like to also urge you that we're working on that because we all here, if, if there's no cargo, none of us will exist. No government agency will exist. I mean, we won't be at the ports. So we need to do our utmost best, make sure that we do what we need to do. From NPA to customs to, you know, I, I, I've seen, I know that the top, the people at the top are not aware of what is happening. So that's why we write to the top. We write go to the head of the department, the CAC, Customs will go to him. The one in Apapa has been wonderful. He's actually cooperated and he's actually uh, made sure that the joint examination, Customs is there at 9 a.m. Initially, it was the tell of stories, oh, they come at 1 p.m. so that uh, a lot of things go on. That has reduced. It doesn't happen anymore. For the joint boarding, we need to address it because some of my sister agencies are still at fault. Another thing, though, is that MACN should please advise the ship captains they should not give any gifts to anybody because they are still giving the gifts. Don't, want don't give, not even a, the other day it was, a, it was a can of Coke that somebody came out from the vessel with. It should not happen. Not even a fly should the person come out from the ship because we are there, we see them. Thank you. Okay, a round of applause, please. Um, any other comments from... Um, any of the agencies at the ports that, that is here. Otherwise, I will go straight back to Mr. Fadipe, who has been hoping he will have an opportunity to respond. Ah, Madam. Yes. Sorry, I had to come up again. I listened to her, and she talked about having issues with sister agencies at the ports. Can we know these issues? Can she atomize them so they will know how to address them? Thank you very much. Right now, Right now, there's no joint body. You still go, in fact, someone tell us, one of the agents came to tell us that they are the ones that pro provide um, logistics, which is wrong. There's a particular agency that is supposed to provide, provide a vehicle to take, to take everybody in and take everybody out. That's not done. So the person goes, picks up immigration, or picks up customs, they'll go do the joint, the body, come out. So if there's no joint body yet. That's what we found. Okay. Yes, can you take the mic, please? Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Fadikbe, um, data, consequences, those two things don't seem to, uh, to be very clear yet. How can we? How can the public gain access to the data around this system in order to give confidence 
that something is really happening, that if you report, something will be done. And secondly, uh, maybe it's more a question for ICPC, how do we ensure that there are consequences for those who are responsible for not doing their job, whether it is on the private side or it is on the government side? Because it's not enough to seize a container. Somebody imported it. Were there any consequences for the person who brought in the container? Were there any consequences for the government agents who signed off the release of the container? So, Mr. Fadipe, here. Thank you, Mr. Pampa. On the issue of data you mentioned, yes. there are reports to the Project Steering Committee on happenings on the PSSP. This we can share with you for your own use, so that you know what goes on there. Uh, but there are two things I want to mention. And you said you share with us for our MACN. own use. Okay, MACN. because what we are really hoping for is something that can be made public. Yeah, we will share with you Okay. to make it public. Okay, thank you. Now, two things that I want to make known here today with respect to the SOP. It's not only for government. It's for the private sector too, who are placing the ports, the terminals, and the shipping companies. To what extent are they adhering to this SOP? Because it impacts generally on the cost of doing business in Nigeria when there are delays. And we've seen a lot of delays. And this has to be properly looked into. On the government side, one thing that has been going on that needed urgent addressing is uh, my director mentioned something just now to say when the if there's a lead agency who's supposed to coordinate the activities of these agencies to boss them in and to boss them out. Are they doing that? Not only that, when the best captains calls, they physically go to the offices of these agencies. And the, the challenge is none of them has a working email ID. We are these vessel captains can quickly forward their documents ahead. And that's another challenge which needed an urgent attention. Thank you. About consequences. Yeah. The, the laws are clear on infractions and the attached I mean sanction. So any infraction escalated to ICPC, we are resolute. Indeed, the PSC, the committee visited ICPC chairman, the new ICPC chairman, I mean recently, not quite a month ago. And the chairman, I quote the chairman, he said that he's ready to back the work of the committee up with the available enforcement power of the ICPC. So any infraction escalated to ICPC, we are ready to do it. And I can confirm that we are doing something that I do not want to disclose presently on something that has been related to ICPC. And uh, at, the, at the appropriate time, members of the public will know what we are doing with regards to the infraction that has been reported to ICPC. But there will be sanctions, there will be consequences, provided Nigerians decide to be using the platform and it is escalated to ICPC. The reasons given for not using the the, 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 the platform, they are no longer tenable. One, if you do not use it at all, how will you know that it will not work? So try us out. Try the platform and see whether it works or it does not work. And you can now go to the press and say that it doesn't work. But if you have not tried it, you cannot categorically say that it is not working. The port sector is making progress. It may be incremental, but jointly, we can all work at it so that, so that we can fast track the progress that we are making and we make our ports very, very attractive and competitive. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of um, someone from Abuja Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Wali Rashid. Are you here? Yes, you're welcome, sir. Okay, just to very quickly then come to Mr. Oboma. I, I, I wonder how much power Nimasa has 
or the Ports Authority has, maybe to sanction some of these agents at all? Or who is responsible for sanctioning the agents? Yes. Well, there are ship agents. Well, we'll come also, there's customs agents too. But since customs isn't here, I, I, I wouldn't take that up. But yes. Yes, uh, about ship agents. You know, Nigerian law has special recognition for ship agents. We actually, most of the time, deal with agents. When a ship has come and declared somebody as agent, he takes over the job. Some of the things we do, some of our jobs are post-mortem in operation, like my own case, where I work in the master. A ship comes, she does not comply with a statutory 3% or whatever. I will not the agent. Please, what is that statutory 3%? Okay, Just no, for the sake of the audience. Okay, that is the... 3% uh, threat that the law says the Masha should collect on her behalf. Okay, revenue. Every, every revenue, I'm talking of revenue. Uh, every inbound and outbound traffic of international nature has to declare to the Masha and pay 3% of the gross threat for the job. That is one of the places we interact with the agents. So we have agents registered with us. We have their particulars, we have written. And when you come to declare, we make sure that you attach a document that will show that you actually did the declaration. So once that is done, even the ship goes away, we are on you. And we bring the full weight of the law on you, as though you are the ship. That's what we do. So the agents know us, and we know them. And then, to make it easier, when a ship is to come, because we know it's very difficult to clear some ships within a very time frame, short time frame, we actually have a kind of provisional billing system. Even a ship that is in Antwerp can be cleared by NEMASA before it arrives. And if it arrives, if per adventure, the clearance figures does not tally with what is on ground. We have a mechanism jointly with MPA, done on weekly basis to do that. So we actually hold the agents responsible and will bring the full weight of the session of law to bear on them as though they are the ships and the ship owners. Thank you. Okay, before we go to Mrs. Williams, maybe I, I should also mention that um, we are hearing that ship agents then use this gap as an opportunity to play both sides. That very often, um, ship agents, if, if there's an infraction or accusation of an infraction, the captain is very anxious to leave. And then they say, don't worry, you can sail with the vessel. We will sort it out with the agent. And between the officials and the agent, they truly sort it out. And there's some corruption involved in that as well. I don't know how you will respond to that allegation. Well, I, I don't know about the corruption side. <laughs> the fact is that, let me be clear, when a ship, for instance, comes and she brings in cargo, and there's some calculations and some figures are arrived at, and there is a discrepancy, we don't only use that. We work in collaboration, as I said, with MPA, the landlords. The landlords will have to bring in their figures or their information. NNPC, in the case of liquid cargo, will have to bring in their own. So we gather all these things and we come on the round table. We call it the final billing section of NEMASA. So we get information from all these sections and we put it together and we arrive at a very, very amicable solution and in quick time because it's done every week. So. Madam, do you have any comments? I, I concur with this um, submission, but on a general note, just to say that um, following the port reforms, uh, MPA had really focused on ensuring that um, the environment is um, conducive to business as it should be. 
um, by virtue of the Ports Act, we we um, perform our functions using the powers vested on the Nigerian Ports Authority um, for following the Ports Concession. We have a relationship with the terminal operators guided by our um, by the agreements that we've signed on to. So generally, I would want to, 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 to comment generally that we're really working towards being that lead port in Africa. So for almost every issue, we ensure that um, we take prompt action. Thank you. Okay, um, there's a contribution right here. I would like to know, I don't know if it's Mr. Padipa, I would like, actually like to know which of the ship agents are complicit. Which of them, which one of them, because we need to follow up with these people. It shouldn't happen. And any time it happens, it should be reported. See? Well, uh, for public concern, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. My counterpart from ICPC mentioned that at the appropriate time, the public will get to know. Okay, we'll see, we'll see later, please. Uh -huh. But 70% of the vessel agents are complicit. That's the honest truth. Okay. Um, I don't know, sir, if you, if you have any other thing to add before we throw it open to uh, the audience. Please, if you have a question, uh, we'll, recognize, we'll recognize you and you can make, you can uh, direct your, your, your questions to uh, members of the panel. Well, I, what I can say is that uh, if we can walk the talk that we are hearing here today, it's uh, very good. It looks like it's, uh, the future is very bright and good for us. Uh, and then we should not create an opportunity for the bag decks within our system, either regulatory or the operators to actually dampen our enthusiasm at this. We also should not uh, be driven by the quest to make a lot of money. We don't turn regulation to revenue generation. Uh, too much of it. Uh, it's also not going to be good for business. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so from the floor, any questions? Yes, the gentleman over there, followed by the man over here. Sorry, the lights are in my eyes. Oh, and, and oh, you already have the mic. Please, please, you can get up. Introduce. My name yourself. is Wale Rashid. I'm director of policy for Abuja Chamber. Okay. Uh, I'm so glad. We are glad to be here. Just a month ago, we had a roundtable on operational efficiency of the port. And uh, the custom and all the agencies were there, including private sector operators. I have some questions and comments. And questions first. When you are talking of SOP, I think generally we are talking of making the port operational and functional. Uh, what we have today, the port is not functioning. Uh, and uh, when I look at the table, I discover, uh, apart from my LCC, the key people here are mostly government people. There's no way you can judge yourself. The government agencies are serving private sector operators. And I look around, we don't have the report users here. We, the, the OPS is supposed to judge your activities. And for example, I want to ask, on that committee, steering committee, I hope LCC is there. I mean, OPS representative is there. I don't know if it's, if you don't have OPS rep, you cannot have input on what people are feeling. For example, the Nimasa rep mentions a factor, said I was once a port user. And that was why of everybody on the table, on the panel, apart from LCC, his contribution is different. He's able to speak from the angle of port users. I think for us to get the port functional, uh, the the um, Nigerian Port Authority, Shippers Council, Custom Immigration, there is need to involve private sector operators. You cannot relate yourself. The port is not functioning. Whatever we may say, we know what it is. How can you have an SOP and we are all saying it's working, you can do And we see the world we are facing in Lagos ports. 
I, I think we need to address this following issue. What is happening to the issue of single window? Is it custom that is running it or are all the agencies into it? Because that is the art of the crisis facing the port. And nobody is talking about You can't have a functional SOP when you don't or you refuse to resolve the issue of, I mean, of single window. Custom is managing it now. So leave the custom that should be running it. So leave it jointly run. So leave the national window. We are, we are not talking about that. Or maybe it's beyond the scope of this uh, event. The other thing I want to mention is um, I heard something about individual agencies boarding ships. I was wondering which one is more efficient. Is it having joint body so that everybody spends two hours or one hour and you leave? Or is it individual body? So I, I, I agree the SOP is a good start and uh, it's due and subject to reform and review, which is good. But we must agree that we have a long way to go. And this idea of government agencies working in silos, trying to shield the private sector from uh, uh, what they are doing, it, it, it doesn't work because the agencies are supposed to serve the public, the port users, and they must be adequately represented. If they are not, you will be taking decisions that we have only government interest. Thank you very much. I'm right here. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. My name is Nathan Williams. I am a reporter with Classic FM, uh, who are also uh, owners of um, Beat FM. We are in Lagos, we're in Port Harcourt, we're also in Ibadu. Now, the reason why I'm giving all this analysis is because of um, the Nigerian Port Authority, knowing fully well, Mr. Fadikwe, you talked about the PSSP, that's the Port Service Support Portal. Uh, my question is, how far have you gone, especially since the awareness is low at this point? Now, we've talked about more improvement when it comes to making the awareness known. How well have you related with the media in order to make some few announcements, no matter how short, one minute, so that, because I believe, whether you are working in the Nigerian Port Authority or you are having some business transactions, even if you are not, one way or the other, we make online requests. We buy online through some of these uh, agencies. And in order for your items to come down here, it has to come through the ports. So what are you doing with the media? How well are you working with the media? We have our branches in Lagos, Ibadan, and the rest of them, Port Harcourt, so that people will know what the standard operating procedures are, the SOPs. It is very, very important. And then there are so many people who are not in Lagos, they are in Abuja. Is there an awareness also, also for them so that they can know what they need to do, these procedures, the steps they need to take in order to you know, follow through these processes that are required? Because if they don't, we'll keep having these challenges. And then Mrs. Williams from the Port Authority. I think it is also very imperative that the Port Authority also work with the media so that every information, few announcements, one minute, two minutes, weekly, monthly, so that it can be announced. This will also create awareness and lots of people will be aware of what is going on in the Nigerian Port Authority. That's my contribution. Thank you very much. I'm Mike uh, I did a freelance writer. Firstly, I want to congratulate the organizer of the event, it's timely. What I'm saying is timely is that presently the federal government is looking for how to generate revenue. And we should take note of all the presenter have said, which is timely indeed. My question I pose to you, the presenters, just like the general have said. You need to market what is the advantage on this to an average man in the city. Will it increase tax revenue generation? What are some of the key way people need to know on introduction of different um, techniques so that it can reduce to do something? Then to the organizer, I'm also very happy when you're trying to give your overview of your visions. Uh, which is highly commendable, and I wish you the best of luck. But my concern is another agency, which you have not even mentioned, Nigeria Export Promotion Council. Yeah, they have a lot of platform. 
and which uh, they have. Then the other area you need to consider is the financial institution, that is the banking sector. Uh, they also have a role. The internet provider, they have a role. Universities, research institute, because you may mention of um, data, such like that. Uh, thank you very much, and I wish you the best. Good morning. My name is Ajayi Oluwani. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on, please. We who is speaking? Okay. Okay, please go on. Okay, sir. My name is Ajayi Oluwani from Standard Exporter Multipurpose Cooperative Society Abuja. I want to ask a question from the port user survey we are given. 1.2 there says there is presence of clear procedures and process backed by laws. The procedures are backed up by law as instituted to guide operational processes for efficiency at the ports. But goes to 1.3, it says there is exercise of discretionary power by port terminals and officials. The reason why we are here today, I believe, is about service delivery at the Nigeria port, how we can improve it. But here, do we really, as part of the SOP, the standard operating procedures, do we build in a kind of internal control or a compliant unit that is independent of the operators? As in, as they are committing all those, somebody is using his discretion to carry out his or her duties. Whereas there is a standard operating procedures in place, is there a unit that reports such? That is a question. Okay, thank you very much. I will come back to the panel. Does anyone want to respond to the questions? Yeah, I just want to respond to the I mean, comment made by uh, Abuja Chambers of Commerce. Um, transparency is required in all governance matter. I mean, that cannot be disputed at all. But it would never mean that government agencies should abdicate I mean, their responsibility. When the corruption risk assessment was conducted, everybody, including CSOs, were involved, and the outcome was published. This committee was established to implement the recommendations. The single window that you spoke about is part of what was recommended, recommended in this report. Single process card and a whole lot of other things that were recommended. But at this particular forum, we are talking about one of the recommendations, which is standard operating procedures. So that is why nobody here has mentioned what has been happening with regards to single window, with regards to I mean, single process card, and so on. We are just discussing the single process card. But I must say, even in arriving at the SOPs that was harmonized and placed on the PSSP, that is the port support, uh, uh, the service support portal. The private sector and the ordinary people on the street were involved, like I, 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 I can, freight forwarders were involved. Uh, sh uh, Shipping Association of Nigeria, they were involved. They have SOP there. Shippers, they have their SOP on the PSSP. Freight forwarders have their own SOP on the on the on that platform. Even terminal operators, they have their own SOP on the platform. So everybody was involved in arriving at the SOP that we are discussing today. It's not as if, but in implementing it, government will not abdicate its responsibility. You, of course, you can't I mean, expect them to implement it for you. You would, they will be called upon. All the stakeholders will be called upon to assist where required. That is why it is. And, and this forum, you can, I mean, call it. We are, we are giving, we are giving our scorecard, so that people like you, the beneficiaries and other stakeholders, you can ask questions on how far that we have done. 
So it's not as if that, I mean, we, government cannot work alone. It's not possible. It will not work. So we have worked in arriving at the SOP with every stakeholders that you can think of and implementing the, uh, the concept, the idea. Now we are giving, it's like, like we are giving the scorecard of what we have done so far. I mean, that is just what I, I want to, I want to make. It's not as if the government agencies are working in silos with, well, with regards to uh, 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 the port reforms. We cannot, it can never happen, it will not work. Thank you. Um, also to respond to um, Abuja Chamber of Commerce, yes, it's um, fundamental. You cannot be a judge in your own cause. And um, I believe that is not the essence of this meeting. We would take feedbacks from stakeholders. In Nigerian Ports Authority, we hold them quarterly stakeholders engagement. If we have any stakeholder here that we need to extend invitations to, I'll be quite happy to enlist such. And um, we'll take the Chamber of Commerce now on board and we extend our um, quarterly stakeholders um, and you too, okay, um, to them. Then for the SOPs, we know that um, SOPs specifies procedures. Um, each agency, Still, we still have our governing laws. We still have the statutes backing us up from we, where we derive issues even relating to um, sanctions as the moderator had uh, mentioned before. So for everything that you do, it will still be guided by what you are empowered to do. And some relationships could just be commercial. So maybe in, 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 in giving sanctions, it could be administrative sanctions, suspension, withdrawal of services, just to touch on the other issue with the um, agents. Um, we also mentioned the need to work with the media. I would say this also on the platform of PSC. Um, that, sh that would soon come on board. We, we've considered it and we are really, really um, running with that too because um, where people don't have the required information Although that is not to say that it had not been disseminated ab initio. Um, at the launch, we didn't leave it just in Abuja. We went to um, all the port cities to say, this is what we are placing on the government side. But then, maybe time has passed and we need to renew it. We've taken that on board and we'll continue. We'll make it um, continuous. So that suggestion to is really um, taken. I don't know if there's any other um, question directed to us. Oh, a question that was posed by uh, Mr. Ajayi, I believe, where he said, I want to quote you, probably as what you mean, do, do, we, do we build in an internal control independent of the operators? Is that the question? Okay. Uh, Probably you're looking at the fear of redistribution or apathy on the side of the reporter. No, that we also talked about compliance. Yeah, the, the, the internal sorry. control, the internal control we built in, independent of that operator, is the port service support portal, which nobody has control over. Whenever any complaints goes in there, you cannot retrieve it, and it has become an industry matter that has been escalated to everybody in the industry. So that internal mechanism. So until and unless you start using it, then the better for us. Thank you. I just want to. My name is Miss Sodin from the Nigerian Sports Council. Just want to add to what they have said, Mr. Bakari and Mrs. Williams, on the composition of. Maybe the PS committee, that is a project steering committee. It was deliberate, number one, that uh, it should be made up of the government agency that have the hands on on the court and the anti corruption uh, agencies. That is why you have ICPC there, you have Tuga there, then you also have DPP there. Initially, we also have the EFCC and the others. 
And then when the SOP started, we also looked at the agencies that have the statutory right to be operating in the ports. It was supposed to be a progressive thing because as it is now, we have not even cleared that of NAVDAC and SOM to be on the platform. We are working on it. So we are extending it to all the stakeholders. And for the private sector, we look at the government agency that is overseeing what. For the freight forwarder, the CRFFN were able to go and get us their SOP for the freight forwarder. For the shipping company, MACN worked with the Nigerian Shippers Council to came up with one. And for the terminal operator, MPA did work with them and came up with them. I just want to clarify that aspect. Thank you. Uh, Madam, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is. Okay, you need to bounce away from the microphone. Okay. Okay. My name is Nafisa. I am a I work with the Center for Peace and Environmental Justice. I see a soul that. Uh, that should have this way. Okay. Just back, back the. Okay. The, the speaker. Okay. I work with the Center for Peace and Environmental Justice as program manager. We are in uh, Delta State. It's still. Okay. Um, Lagos, uh, Kano, and Abuja here. Um, my question actually is with regards to, I heard uh, the person from ICPC talking about um, having CSOs work with uh, the development of the SOPs. We work um, in worry ports and we have not been included um, in any of this. I don't know, is there any medium where we can see the criteria for CSOs that uh, want to work with you? Um, that's, that's, that's the question. Okay. Can we take a few more questions and then we'll come back? There's a gentleman in the charge up there and then we'll come to the front. Thank you very much, sir. My name is Tiffany Obiago. I'm the... I work for African Food Export. Uh, considering the fact that we are talking about service delivery, uh, I want to bring to our notice that it's important we begin to look at what happens before the port and inside the port. If we look at the commodities that we transport to the port, the delays before the port and also the delay in the port, it tells more on us when the goods finally leave the shores of Nigeria. So in developing the SOP, please, I want us to consider some of these factors, if possible, the people in the food business should also be integrated in it. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sir Jidin. I work with Access Fund. Uh, my question goes to the SAPC representative. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear that uh, most of the complaints lodged so far have been fully resolved. Excellent, very, very happy about it. But I'm interested in the number. How many complaints have you received since the beginning of the platform? Okay. And uh, of course, you have said that everything has been regularized. Then I would also suggest that what preventive measures, corrective measures, are we putting in place as an organization to prevent the recurrence of all the complaints that have been lodged by the various complainants? Thank you. We'll take one more here. Oh, and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Susan George. I'm the MD of the Dina Investment. We engage in export. I just want to find out if the exporters are also integrated in this uh, SOP. Thank you. Uh, good morning, all. My name is uh, Andra Onsi. Masses Awareness Initiative. Uh, my question is uh, simple. We are in a country that uh, works in line with presidential and the parliamentary system of government. I want to find out uh, what role do the legislative arm will contribute towards the uh, towards dispensing these uh, procedures. Because when, when we bring up these beautiful policies, 
the legislative army try to be either a part of it or they may not support the implementation of these laws. So in a nutshell, what role is the legislative arm of government playing in delivering uh, service at the Nigerian ports? Thank you. Mr. Bakari, seems like you'd like to start. Yeah, you, my friend from Access Bank, you said the preventive mechanism. The general makeup of PSSP in itself, serve, the PSSP serve as a peer review mechanism for all the agencies because they are all there. When a particular agency is flagged for an infraction, everybody on the platform knows. So it serves as peer review mechanism for everybody. And uh, by design, I think PSSP has analytics. All these yummy questions, the man in charge of PSSP, I mean, analyzing it and everything will give you, I mean, the data that you that you want. So, but our presence, ICPC presence at the, I mean, on the on the on the platform, is preventive in itself because all the agencies do not want, I mean, their members to be picked up. So they will rather quickly resolve, I mean, the grievance rather than for the platform to escalate it officially to ICPC because we have time, I mean, uh, timeline for every activities on the platform. You report, it's escalated to the agencies, I mean, concerned, it's given a certain number of days to, I mean, to get it resolved. If you cannot resolve it in a certain number of days, what you should do, everything is, is clearly stated. It is when you have, I mean, utilize the total number of days given to you to get it resolved that you are unable to do it, that the platform escalates it to ICPC. And like I reported earlier on, everyone that has been reported to PSSP, the agencies have taken care of it that, it, I mean, they did not get reported officially to ICPC. ICPC, or, yeah, we are even on the platform, you do not have to report it. We, we know that, okay, 24 days, has elapsed and we're supposed to take action. So the enforcement mandate of the ICPC backing this project is enough prevention. Can I, can I uh, push back a bit, okay. uh, Mr. Bakari? Okay. Because you already heard that joint inspection, which is part of the SOPs, SOP. is not happening. And this is a consistent um, thing. Agencies are not complying. So even if, and it has been reported before, uh, one of the ones that Mr. Fadipe is working on, as he mentioned earlier, he was escalated from a ship captain. And yet we on shore already know that the joint boarding and the joint inspection and so on isn't quite working as per the SOP. He is now asking, how do we prevent it? Because does each ship captain have to come and complain? We already know that it's not working as was designed in the SOPs. Uh, very, very good. You know, I acknowledge that the awareness of the SOP is still very, is still very, is still very low. But at the same time, I want to acknowledge the fact that the top of the agencies concerned have not actually taken the bull by the arm because we, the, on the two occasions that we have done. I mean, certain exercises to to know what is happening at the port. The the the, the committee went to the port. We to, I mean, to review what was going on, and we discovered that major complaint given by I mean, uh, those people that were caught were that they have not been instructed by their agencies to board jointly. And it is on that note that we are working at that. Even at, at ICPC, we have visited. Uh, the immigration based on that. We have visited Nimasa based on that, and we are in the process of getting in touch with the custom. It is after that, I mean, that intervention from ICPC that, okay, we will now use the enforcement mandate that, okay, when your officials are locked up, 
or restraint for a fraction of the joint body exercise, you will take the desired exercise. But we won't do it until we get, I mean, we use the, 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 the contact that we have with all the agencies. Okay, I, I hope we're addressing the, the question now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Madam, did you want to? Okay. Um, there were other questions about also how civil society was um, um, uh, involved or not, because they're involved in the ports in Delta. Honestly, um, and uh, Mrs. William has just extended an invitation to all of you to come on board on the quarterly uh, stakeholder meetings. That if you if you can you can see her immediately after this, so that you can be you can be involved. But it became so clear to us, especially at the meeting to ICPC, and it last about two weeks ago, that publicity is required to take this thing forward. And being government agencies, we can't do it on our own. The CSOs and other stakeholders outside of government are going to be involved. There are so many vest issues that we cannot vent on our own, but you can do it. I mean, the CSOs and other stakeholders outside of government can push it into the public domain for us. So we, are, we, we welcome participation of CSOs and other st stakeholders outside of our government. And we are seriously working on the political will of the head of agencies involved in these activities too. So that giving an instruction at the top, let the instruction percolate down, and we are relying so much on, if what's come to us and the officials are not complying, we know what we can do then. But, yeah, we won't do anything until we have done I mean, all this. So, members of the public, stakeholders, you are enjoying to gather intelligence. We work on the intelligence that, that, that you, you, you can give us. Intelligence gathering is very important. And we know that stakeholders outside of government can do it even better than us. And you can channel that instruction directly to ICPC or through the PSSP. If you do not feel comfortable with it, the PSSP channel those instructions directly to ICPC. We will be glad, I mean, to have those intelligence. Thank you. Okay. Um, the question was also asked. I don't know which member of the panel would like to take it. That is there need for a compliance unit? Is compliance an area that should be strengthened in order for these SOPs and grievance mechanism to work better? I think Madam is sorry, sir? trying to answer. It. Yes. Um, with respect to compliance, I, I believe that um, each agency represented here, we have a compliance unit. Um, you cannot be in, 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 in business with other parties and you're not interested in compliance. So I would want to say that um, for Nigerian Ports Authority, we, have, um, we deal with the issues of um, compliances some arising out of contractual relationships, some arising, of course, even out of um, the statute. You need to do what the statute says you should do. And um, for issues, somebody raised an issue to that um, when um, an employee does something, what do you do? The, each organization also, to, we have our conditions of service. So we deal with issues internally. And at the PSC, PS, um, PSC level, we come together, you, you should have the understanding that principally we want to see the recommendations of CRE implemented. So we come together and we try to become like a formidable force in seeing to, 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 to the type of uh, port sector that we all desire. I would want to reiterate that Nigerian Ports Authority, our vision is to be the leading port in Africa. And um, of course, compliances can never be traded away if that is where you are heading to. So we're making the progress. And I, I, I want to believe, without being a judge in our own cause, that where we were a few years ago is not where we are today. We've had to, in line with global practices, deploy automation to eliminate discretion in diverse areas of our own 
operations. We hold stakeholders engagement as we have said, so that you're not judging yourself. You feel, oh, I'm just doing what is right, but your stakeholders are not indeed satisfied. So to that extent, I want to say compliance matters to us and we follow through on it. Thank you. I, I just want to say that uh, there won't be any need for one overarching compliance unit. Uh, is, that, is that not what you, are, what you are trying to do? There won't be any need for that. When each agency, they have their compliance mechanism already. And whenever uh, infractions are reported, I think it is those compliance units that handle those, I mean, those infractions internally for those agencies. The economic, uh, uh, Shippers Council is even the economic regulator of the industry. So they, they have their own mechanism for resolving, I mean, business to business and agency to agency uh, um, uh, disputes. So the, 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 the mechanism for resolving issues are there, just the will to carry it to the letter is what is required. And we have taken a step towards that. Uh, in, a matter, in a matter of uh, weeks, probably we are going to complete the work that we are doing with regards to anti-corruption policies for all the agencies. We have started that work almost I mean, three years ago. We have started it, but we have not. Unfortunately, we have not completed all the all the agencies represented at the port is supposed to have anti-corruption policies. Most of them have submitted for I mean for revision, and we are going to I mean take it forward any moment from now. So anti-corruption policies of the agencies to be implemented by their in-house compliance units will help a great deal in this assignment. Thank you. Okay, um, just. <laughs> Did you want to make any comment? We, we would, I think this is a good place for us to round up. Uh, yes. Sorry? Oh, there's a question you want to respond to. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, please go ahead, sir. Well, before I move on to that question, mm -hmm. I think the rider will be helpful for the audience too. Uh, still on the publicity of the SOPs. The SOPs mentioned, apart from the PSSP platform, you can get the SOP on the different website of all agencies. If you go to the website of Nigeria Pass Council, the SOP is there. And on the other agencies, I mean platform, you have the SOP is there. Now, the PSSP on its own, is not only even meant for complaints alone. You can make inquiries on the PSSP. There's a column there, you see inquiry. If you click on the inquiry, whatever information makes, balance and feedbacks. Even lodging a complaint, it will tell you what is the timeline for that complaint to be resolved. So if it's going outside the timeline, you have an opportunity of going back there, logging in again, and uh, get some things done there. And on the compliance equally, mention that every agency have their own compliance system. In a Yash Pass Council, it will interest you to note that every week, we don't deal nothing less than eight to 10 mediation meetings. We are by, when you complain against a party, all parties will be brought to a round table. x the problems, and we we'll ask whoever is the hearing agency to do the needful, within which you are given a timeline to do it, and if, I mean, if we do not comply, then you'll be enforced to do it. So are you saying in a year, we're talking about at least 520 mediation meetings that have taken place most in time, Shippers Council? Most times more than that. That's why I said this rider will take me to answer okay. the question of the access bank man. Mm -hmm. So not only the PSSP, is only the platform you can complain. There are other platforms you can complain. Uh, apart from the PSSP, sir, we have an email platform, which has been in existence before the coming of the PSSP. On this email platform, we are talking of an average of maybe maybe 30 in a day. 30 complaints minimum. That is on the email ID. Not to be talking of the one that goes on the telephone, not to be talking of the one that goes on SMS, and not to be talking of the ones that goes on the WhatsApp platform. Because the WhatsApp is introduced because of life occurrences. We are by people who send us graphics to know what is happening and for us to be able to locate, I mean, make the location. Sorry, sir. Is there a cost to having Shippers Council do all of this work on behalf of people who are complaining? It's absolutely free. Because there are a way 
you are paying us for these services indirectly as a port user. Because uh, when you do have your custom duty, there's a percentage of that custom duty that goes to Nigerian Shippers Council at source. So whether you come to us, we work for you or not, you're already paying us. So why don't you take advantage of free of charge? On the PSS visa, we have close to 400 as of today. Close to 400 cases as of today. The data could be made available if you interface with us, as in the breakdowns and everything. And again, this is an advice to the users. We've seen situations we are by somebody on the PS, or sorry, on the PSSP, but we will discontinue with the PSSP. I will try to find out why you are discontinuing. Most of these complainants, at a point, I won't say maybe threat from the agencies or whatever, they will go behind, resolve, and disengage from the PSSP, which is not good for the system. And we keep encouraging them to let them know. This system is a distraction on it. How do you make it work? Even there are some people that will come to us to say, yes, we've gone to the agency, and the agency is saying, please go back to Nigerian Pass Council and withdraw that thing. Which is not a good thing for the system. But like uh, the president said, he's seeing a new and better future in Nigeria. If we could all work up with this thing, flow with it passionately. I want to believe there's a better future, I mean, for the country. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Uh, we're coming to the close of this um, engagement. Uh, there was a piece of research that was quoted to us in the Lagos stakeholder meeting that said, I think that every throughput in the port, every 6% increase, adds about 12% to our GDP. So the things that we're discussing and the government that is looking for revenue, we really have to take all of these issues that cause delays at the ports very seriously because increasing the throughput by about 6% would cause our GDP to jump by as much as 12%. So it's very important that we take this very seriously. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that this has been a very well kept secret and uh, Nigerians have not known very much about this project that has been on since 2012 but today's meeting is part of a series of meetings to awaken the interest of the private sector and other stakeholders to what has been going on prelude to starting a three-year effort of um, of communications, targeted communications, to ensure that everybody is aware of what is going on. Please, can we have um, a round of applause, please, for the panel? <laughs> can I ask the other agencies represented at the ports, uh, representatives of other agencies, representative representatives of other agencies at the port to please come up and take a photograph uh, with the panel, please. And then it is lunchtime for, for all of us. Please, another round of applause for the panelists. <laughs> Madam, uh, or should I say Madam, can you please join us? Um, Vivek, can you join us, please? Mrs. Ogenyi, uh, Mrs. Ezedima. Yes, we can go down one. So, it's safer. Please, the ladies, come to the middle. We like the bright, bright uniform. Always very smart. After you are part of the... Please join us. Thank you. 
Okay, the second song, the song of people can come to the back. Yeah, the next part of the life will reduce. Thank <laughs> you.